Our first guest has been called one of the most remarkable artists of her generation, and her work has been celebrated at museums around the globe, from the La Consevera in Spain to the Brooklyn Museum in New York City. And today she's here to discuss her de directorial debut, Happy Birthday to a Beautiful Woman, Micheline Thomas. Welcome to Arise 360. Thank Micheline, you. Micheline, how are you? I'm, well, I'm wonderful. Oh. Happy to be here. So let's discuss your directorial debut. Okay. It centers around your mother. Yes, it does. Sandra Bush. Why yeah. was it important for you to tell her story? It was important for me to tell her story because she's been my muse for many years, mm -hmm. since 2000, about 14 years. Wow. I used her in my paintings and my photographs and she had an uh, onset of illnesses from rheumatoid arthritis to kidney failure to um, you know liver failure and you know and several addictions and so I wanted to tell her story because I felt like she had a worthy story to be told. Yeah and it's you know? an unflinching look at her yeah. life yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. I know that it must have been a grueling process mm -hmm. for you both artistically and emotionally. Why did you decide to be so open? Well, because I used her so much in my work mm -hmm. and she's been such a major figure in my work that I thought it was important to sort of tell the story behind the person mm. and the picture. Who is she? Sort of like, who is Mona Lisa? Yeah. Like, let's, let's give a narrative to who this person really is. Because we all have a story, mm -hmm. and I think we all have a story worthy to be told. But I think, in particular, my mother, because she's been painted in many ways, and as you said, at the Brooklyn Museum, her work, images of her are there. Um, and all over the world that, who is Mama Bush? Who I think, Mama I think Bush? people wanted to really mm. know who she was. Well, let's find out a little bit more about her in okay. this clip. Okay. All right. I think, um, I think about dying. Yes, I think about dying. I don't want to die, no time soon. You know, I, w I want to live long. Um, I have longevity in my family. And I feel if I take care of myself, get back into my health, that I will have 20 more years to live or more. How do you want to? Wow. wow. <laughs> and over that span of her life, you know, we talked about <laughs> yes. you featuring her in a lot of your works. And she actually wanted to be a supermodel. So in some ways, you've kind of helped that dream you know, come to reality. Yeah, as a it took me. World. It took me making this documentary to learn mm. that. Like, mm. um, although she's been in photographs and paintings, and I'm just making my work in my studio, I didn't really. That didn't really sort of sink in into until I made this documentary, asking her the questions, and she stated it in the film mm. that I've made her the model of the art, wor art world, and mm. she states that. And so when she said that, it was like, wow, okay, I did f help her fulfill her dream. Wow. wow. So that was, that was very exciting. Oh, that's so beautiful. now that she's seen the film, how has she reacted to it, and has she regretted being so open? Well, no, she, she did see the film um, in September when it was debuted at Brooklyn Museum, but she died in November 7th. Mm. So she died two months after the film debuted in Brooklyn Museum, mm -hmm. and she was very proud of the film. She was very honored. She was happy to tell her story, um, and she was inspired, and the only thing that she didn't like about the film was that she wanted me to airbrush her wrinkles, which... which <laughs> understandable. Which, under yeah, <laughs> understandable. Any beautiful woman would want that, I think. But um, I told her I couldn't do that. I don't. I, I actually really like the rawness and beauty. And um, there's. I feel like my mother has, as an artist, my mother always has an elegance and charisma about her, in spite of her difficulties. And I felt like that prevails through the film throughout. I hope it does, if anything. Over the years, you all had a tumultuous relationship. Mm -hmm. Was this a way for you to find closure and healing? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. It was reconciliation, mm -hmm. um, a resolve. And I think, um, I would hope that this film w would inspire anyone who may have some sort of uh, issues with their, their parents or not, or just, just to uh, find out who their parents really are mm -hmm. as people, yes. as, as another human being. Because I think a lot of times as children, we make our parents to be superheroes, and they are, mm -hmm. they are superheroes, mm -hmm. but we forget that they're people and they have their own sort of aspirations and failures and mm -hmm. you know issues, and that they're continuing with, with you, it as well. When you speak about these issues, what were some of the main issues that you and your mother batted heads with? 
Well, you know, a lot of it had to do with not really knowing what was going on in her life, mm. you know, and also just me as a, you know, black woman coming out, that was an issue. Um, and um, also just really wanting to have her tell me what was going on. Mm. You know, I moved with my grandmother. I didn't really know why I had to go live with my grandmother. Um, and so, and I didn't know that she was continuing sort of, you know, the life that she was continuing. It was just a lot of stories that I heard, as many of us do within our families, um, but I didn't hear them from her. Mm. I always heard them through other people. So her drug addiction was a secret to you when you were growing up? Um, yeah, most, mm. mostly, yeah, it was until it, came out because you can you can only can hide it but for so long sure. you know especially because, when you grow older yeah, yeah because it takes a toll so yes um, it was a secret when I was younger but as a young adult you know it sort of prevailed it started to show itself mm. All right. wow. Well, well talk, talk to us about the title of the film. I oh, know yeah, the it involves title's great. a cake. Yeah. Oh. What's the story there? Well, it involves a very big cake okay. that she, and when she turned 50 years old, she invited me to her birthday party. I was actually at um, graduate school at the time. And at I, Yale. At Yale. Mm -hmm. And I went down to New Jersey to the party with a group of friends. And when I get there, I walk into the door, and it's all of her friends. Everyone's having a great time. And I think in the, in the film, you'll see certain clips from her 50th birthday. And on the table is this huge cake and it says, happy birthday to a beautiful woman. And I thought, did you do this? She's <laughs> like, well, my friends said they were gonna give me a cake and if they were gonna give me a cake, it had to say, happy birthday to a beautiful woman. I know, it. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, I think the title, I like to think the title for me means celebrating womanhood and motherhood. It's mm. sort of defining what women are in the world. Mm. So if we can, you know, say happy birthday to all great women in the world. I think this is a great title to sort of like jump off. Hmm. The thing I love about your work, Micheline, is that the women are African American, they're mm. bold, they're brash, they're unapologetic yeah. about who they yeah. are. I also love And they may be a little rough around the edges, but that's okay. That's I like okay. that. They're human. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I also love the play with Swarovski crystals uh -huh. and rhinestones. Uh -huh. When did you begin to hone your signature style? I think, once again, in graduate school, I've always played with uh, untraditional materials being like um, craft materials, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I've always been interested in working with those materials. And it started mostly in graduate school that um, I embarked in, um, to working with rhinestones. I used to work with a lot of glitter. Mm -hmm. And one day I was at Michael's store and I thought um, that rhinestones sort of reminded me of pointillism. I was really interested into French Impressionism, mm -hmm. um, looking at Seurat and thinking of all the Impressionists. And it reminded me of these little specks of color. And so I really, I really sort of responded to that aesthetic. And that's how rhinestones became a part of my work. But where did it all begin for you, and how old were you when you realized, I want a career in art? <laughs> oh, well, not that easy, actually. It wasn't like uh, when I was very young, like many artists mm. who probably at six, year, six years old think they want to be an artist. You I, actually considered a career in, in law. I, I considered a now, career in law. I know you. I, know. I cannot see you as, as a lawyer. You can't? No. Really? Okay, okay. No. We, you, me and you should debate. I bet I will. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, I love it. <laughs> no, but... Um, no, I was really interested in law and um, actually corporate law, and I was going to go to school. I worked at a law firm called Davis Wright Tremaine, but um, I actually didn't start doing art until like my late twenties. Uh, although, but it, it's late. But when I say that, I've always done after school programs. My mother was very active, is active in sort of exposing my brother and I to many different things. So we did a lot of after school programs um, and summer camps. But one thing that I, when I was in, uh, um, as a young adult, I went to an art therapy um, course. And so I started making all of this work and a lot of my friends in Portland, Oregon, um, where I was going to school, encouraged me to apply to art school. And so I did. Wow. Yeah. And you ended up at Yale. Well, I, before Yale, I had to go to Pratt. So to I Pratt. ended up at Pratt first. And, um, and that's in Brooklyn, New York. And that's in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And then um, from there, I went to graduate school to pursue my studies. Further. Well, have you ever looked back and said, I wonder what my life would have been like as a lawyer? Well, I, I think I would still be as successful. I would mm -hmm. like to think that. Mm -hmm. um, just because my personality and my sort of 
tenacity and mm -hmm. perseverance. But um, I think uh, I would be a very probably political and controversial art, uh, lawyer. I think I would mm -hmm. sort of now like that. I can see yeah. that. I can <laughs> tackling see. some major issues yeah, for sure. I can see you yeah. mixing it up about women, women of color. Women of color. Okay. Well, speaking of women of color, your portrait of Michelle Obama. Yeah. Goodness, has yeah. she seen it? Yeah, she's seen it, okay. and she's aware of it, and she's been offered it. But when you're in the White House, you can't offer those. Be sort of you can't, see, be you can't accept those type of gifts. Mm -hmm. So it's at the National Portrait Gallery. They mm -hmm. purchased it. It's there. Um, and at the time when I made it, it was actually a work of art that was for a um, charity auction for um, ch kid, uh, child education. And so um, when I made it, it was just mainly uh, in celebration of her as the first lady and also of her as being an advocate for education. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought it was just really point, pointing to use her as a icon around education for this particular charity um, and did not know that I was making the first portrait of her when I actually wow. did it. Let's talk about that's your Oprah portrait as okay. well. Yes. Yeah, I, that's interesting that you point that out. Not many people speak about that. I did a portrait of Oprah and Condoleezza Rice. Um, and for me, it was really just wanting to sort of depict and celebrate um, women of color who are really great forces in the world mm. and icons. You have so many amazing and celebrated um, you know, pieces of work. What has been your most meaningful accomplishment? It, it would be this film really? right now, Happy Birthday to a Beautiful Woman. I think, you know, for me, it started out as an art project just for an insular world, the art mm. world, for the Brooklyn Museum. I didn't really conceive it going further than that. And so I'm really, really extremely honored that you know, HBO responded and it's uh, going to reach a larger audience. So when and where can we see it? Um, HBO, February 24th at 9 p.m. And lastly, what's next for you, Micheline? Oh, many things. I'm doing uh, lots of projects. I'm doing many shows in Europe mm -hmm. uh, starting in March, but I'm doing a, from a Pendleton blanket, blanket to uh, collaborating with a shoe designer to doing an amazing rug with Hensel rugs. And, um, and, then, and then I'm going to do a traveling vanity. Ooh. Yeah, so, so it's a lot, a lot of stuff. A busy woman. Yeah. All right. Nicolene, thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for being here yeah, and keep you. up the incredible work. Yes. So thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. And, and you're watching Arise <laughs> Entertainment 360. <laughs>